Hi everyone. Today I have another column that I'm going to read from August 1987. It's called The Search for Peace and Quiet. I picked up my library book at two o'clock Sunday afternoon and began my search for peace and quiet in our living room. There I found Robbie sitting in the center of the room, cranking and re-cranking the music, music box that played Shall We Dance? Over and over and over again. My search for peace and quiet continued. I soon discovered Becky standing by the kitchen counter, smearing peanut butter and jelly on a couple slices of bread. She also smeared peanut butter and jelly up and down her arm and smeared quite a bit on the counter. While all this smearing was taking place, Becky also exercised her lungs by yelling across the house at Robbie, who wouldn't put her music box away. The kitchen sure didn't have any peace and quiet to spare. My search continued. The bathroom, an advertised haven, brought me no help. As soon as I relaxed and lost myself in my book, a tiny knock came at the door. Mommy, hurry up, Rachel said as she tapped, she tap danced outside the door. I gotta go now. Since Rachel never lied about the urgency of her need, I vacated the bathroom and went outside. I should say here, I couldn't go into our bedroom because someone was in there taking a nap and his snoring broke my concentration on the book I was reading. Russell played alone in the yard, revving his new Battle Galactic tank over sand and rocks and boulders. Hmm, not too bad. A corner of the world that seemed almost quiet. I took a seat on the yard swing and began to read. Three minutes and 17 seconds later, the invasion started. Mommy, push me on the swing, Rachel whined. Mom, Rob won't put my music box back where he got it. He said he's going to take it apart and see how it works. Becky screamed at the top of her voice. Shall we dance played as Robbie waved the music box in the air out of his sister's reach. Mom, I wasn't doing anything, he said. I already told Becky I wouldn't hurt her stupid music box. I threw the book down and covered my ears with my hands. Who was I kidding? There wouldn't be any peace and quiet at our place until all the children were sound asleep that evening. I waited and waited and waited for evening to pass. It took a while, as summer evenings do. Finally, the sky began to darken and Rachel fell asleep. Then Russell's head hit his pillow. It took longer for the two, the older two, to find their night's nest, but eventually I was the only person awake. I took a deep breath, <sighs> yawn, and listened to the peace and quiet. It sounded beautiful. <sighs> I picked up my book and curled up in my favorite chair and began to. <sighs> The sound of children turning on morning cartoons woke me. Oh, I missed it. Now, I have a note here that I wrote in 2013, many years later. This really was a tough time for me. Bob was working long hours at Seymour Canning and trying to farm too. His only time at home was to sleep. Bob was a zombie. The poor guy worked so hard, but because of his hectic schedule, I parented alone a good portion of the year. I also tried to help out on the farm, too. I felt torn apart, but did the best I could. Lucky for me, I had women friends to talk to. My friend Lee and I were in the same boat with working husbands who also farmed. I would have been lost without her. Also... Writing my weekly column helped me cope with frustration and tears really did well up. In the column, when I finally could put it in perspective, I eventually laughed. As they say, laughter is the best medicine. Yes, I really was torn apart those years. It was tough. And no, I didn't always let it in my column how bad things were sometimes. But that's the way it goes. And 
Until next time, that's it from Sunnybook Farm.